So next we head to Brazil. Maybe we can find a little ray of hope there somehow. Um, I think you may, if good. you look carefully. If you look carefully. Carlos, uh, go ahead. Well, <clears throat> in recent years, Brazil has been the front page of The Economist, the Christ and Rio flying like a rocket. And then, on another issue, that same rocket losing its momentum and, and falling. So what happens between both, both issues and what was actually uh, the mistake behind the economist's analysis? I dare to say so. Uh, Brazil, in the beginning of the first uh, Lula government, that is 2002, was in a very bad uh, fiscal situation. And Lula used his capital to fix that situation. But that was not enough. Brazil benefited enormously from a commodity surge, a surge on prices. And as we say in Brazil, we had a sea for, a sea for an admiral, an admiral sea. Perfect wind, perfect light, everything was perfect. And for many years, we indulged ourselves into many necessary, justifiable social policies, but that were not so affordable in the long run. Not only that, we insisted on giving power to corporations, meaning the judiciary, uh, people in uh, state-owned enterprises, and all of that meant one thing, potential deficit was growing. In the beginning, that didn't affect the rate of investment. But after a while, especially after 2008, 2010, 2008 was not bad in Brazil, 2009, the GDP had a fall. 2010, it was an extraordinary year, but composed with 2009, it just meant that we were growing at 3.5%. During all that period, we were growing at 2% more than Europe per year. Then, with the Dilma government, uh, we started to have a lot of Keynesianists, but they didn't study Keynes correctly. And they started to intervene in the economy. First intervention, try to uh, change the electricity prices. Try to control everything. That didn't work. That created havoc, and the rate of investment started bit by bit falling. At the same time, we had a central bank dominated by people that were hawks, I would say, that had a, a very strong incentive to create a reputation against fighting inflation when the deficit was growing. So instead of focusing on the deficit, we increased the deficit by paying more interest. Well, public debt, which was around 30-something of GDP, is now at around 80% still manageable. By the way, we have but better public finances than the U.S. We don't have a U.S. Navy. Therefore, we are not the international reserve currency. But if we had, if you lend us your, your Navy, we will be the international currency. So, uh, the disaster manifested itself at full force after the beginning of uh, the second term for Dilma Rousseff, and it was very fast. GDP started falling, the rate of investment fell enormously, there was a lack of trust, and Dilma was actually impeached after two years of her second term for disobeying the fiscal laws. Something that I've never heard happen in Europe or the US, Merkel, was judged by the Supreme Court in Germany, the second chair of the Supreme Court in Germany, for something similar to what Dilma did because when she saved the German banks 
from, the Gre uh, Greek de from Greece's disaster. But Duma was judged by Congress and she lost uh, her position. The vice president entered, as our constitution uh, mandates, and immediately he started a series of uh, reforms. Those reforms, the most important of which would have been the change in social security, were stalled after there were, were accusations that he was involved in a corruption scandal. He went to meet a businessman in the garage of the presidential palace, and from that moment on, Brazil uh, lost governance. With the election of a new president, we started a new period, and we went for recovering the work on social reform. And we are almost there, thanks to a, a good interaction between the president and Congress. Congress in Brazil, and this is ignored by many outside, is very strong right now. It is very po powerful. The president has, uh, there was a law concerning the abuse of power from magistrates, from judges, uh, enacted by the Congress. And the president vetoed 45 items. 30, 20, 33 of those items, the veto was canceled by Congress. So, Power is divided, and this is very important because we belong to the average Latin American class that started their independence drinking from the French Enlightenment. So, as in France, we had our candidates to be Napoleons, to be uh, Napoleon III, to be to be Thiers, to be Clemenceau's, to be De Gaulle's. We always have this demand for a strong man. And of course, uh, Britain did have better credit at the time of Waterloo and could mobilize more people because the decision on the debt was taken by Parliament. This is a deep and profound move that is happening now in Brazil. And for investors, this is extremely important. Next year, the budget is going to be mandatory. Something that foreigners never guess is that we don't have a mandatory budget. The budget, if I say in the budget up to this year, if I say I'm going to spend $100 billion in education, if I decide I'm the president, I decide to spend 50, it's okay, of course. The policy that I will, would develop with 100 billion is different from the policy that I would develop, that I will develop with 50 billion. So the president has to remain this power, and this power has been reduced. So don't expect to end, don't expect Brazil to fix everything at once, but we are moving into the right direction. Disposable income has grown 1.7% on average, in Rio 4% in the last year, up to June, and this is a good sign. Uh, we expect better growth next year. It will take us three, four years to recover full growth, but it is possible, provided we continue to stress on the reforms. Thank you, Carlos.